Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Time for Q101 Sports, sponsored by the Marquee Network. Stream Cubs Baseball at WatchMarquee.com. The Q101 Morning Crew. Sports. Now, maybe you were up late with the Cubs on the West Coast taking on the Dodgers, and I think a lot of us weren't. I think a lot of us passed out and said, hey, listen, I, I'll figure it out in the morning what happens. I mean, they're in the race, of course, for the wild card. Pete Crow Armstrong, what a guy. What a man. And just a couple weeks ago, had that in-the-park home run that almost, I believe, it was, came in second or third place in a record of speed from home plate to home plate of an in-the-park home run. I think it was 14.7 seconds he ran around. And now showing his defense uh, last night. So the game is 6-3 at this point when he comes up in the ninth. And actually, they're on defense, and the Dodgers have a chance to come within one run. So there's a man on third. And this is what Pete Crow Armstrong did to save the day and end the game. High fly ball out towards right center field. Pete Crow Armstrong at the wall jumps. And he made the catch. Oh, baby. (laughs) Pete Crow Armstrong steals a homer from Max Muncy. And that is how this one comes to an end. Well, he did it all night, Boog, sliding all over the place. And in the words of Harry Carey, holy cow, what a way to end the night. And where is the Harry Carey, holy cow? Hmm, that'd be nice to do. If someone could have done that, so, holy, holy cow. cow. It's like, holy cow. <laughs> and Pete Grow Armstrong did make a couple other incredible catches, sliding on the hip, making a grab, and saved the game. It was 3-2 count, two outs, and saved the game to keep the Cubs in this wild card race, desperately trying to stay alive. And here we go. What is it? You know, it's September 11th. You got about... 15, 16 games left at this point. How many games out are we from the wild card? Uh, it's four games, I believe, right now. You guys Woo! are four back, so I I, I really... <laughs> well, we... <laughs> Thank you, Kenzie. <laughs> yeah, baby! Now, now, four games is a lot. We've made it clear yesterday Kinda, that... The... It's not that many. Uh, well, well, the Cubs have a pretty good path, as we said yesterday, except after this Dodgers and only playing the Phillies that are tough in the rest of the season, whereas the Mets, who they're chasing have a really gauntlet schedule. That, that's the thing that I, I actually, I'm, I'm excited for Cubs fans right now, and I'm, I'm normally always rooting for your guys' downfall, but I'd like to see the Cubs in the playoffs this year. And the Cubs' path is, is very easy from here on out. They just have to do their job. They've got the Rockies, they've got the A's, they've got mm-hmm. the Nationals. Yes, they have that series against the Phillies, and then they end the year at home against the Reds. They're competing right now. If you're a Cubs fan, what you need to do is take note of the Braves and the Mets. Those are the teams they're battling for that last wild card spot right now. And both of those teams have brutally hard schedules, including games where they play each other going down the stretch. The Cubs are four back on September 11th, and they have a real shot at winning that last wild card spot. Also, I didn't point out that the Cubs had five runs in the eighth to go ahead in that game, by That's the way. That's cool. I like that. I, and I think there was four errors by the Dodgers in that inning. And Shota, you know, just doing what Shota does, uh, still right. killing it, rookie of the year. Um, so there you go. Uh, let's find out what happens today as the deciding game in this afternoon game against the Dodgers. White Sox got blanked by the Guardians 5 nothing, so they must win 8 of 16 to not be the worst in baseball history. That is good. We do half. Kenzie, they lost more than half their games this year I understand, but what did I say? September counts Truth, (laughs) however, I do remind you There was a stretch when they went 5 and 45 Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Yes They are are currently 33 and 113 And that just looks wrong Yeah, they've got to get the record now, seriously I mean, if I was even playing at this point If there was a game, let's say they win 7 And they're right there uh, I'd throw that game. I, if I was a player, I'd throw it. You got to get the record this way. What's the point otherwise? You're the second worst. Who yeah, cares? Then you're just really bad and no one cares. Right. At least you're, you can be bad enough that people care. Yeah. It would be cool to have like the biggest comeback of all time. Meaning that they win? Like, like next year. Oh, yeah. Like they have this amazing season. So they go from the worst team in baseball. Like that's instead of like second worst team ever. That's just, that's crap. The yeah. headline doesn't look good. Worst team in baseball. <laughs> Now headed for playoffs. You know what I mean? Look at that headline, huh? Nice headline, Kenzie. (laughs) (laughs) The Brian and Kenzie Show. Q. Well, before Brian and Kenzie get you on the phones for Clash with Kenzie for Dane Cook tickets, it's a little flashback. It's some audio of the day. And this is a commercial from the 80s about 
Johnson Boats. Okay, so it's the, the boat brand named Johnson, okay? Saturday nights, distant lights. You, your girl, and your Johnson. <laughs> you and your Johnson. A way of life for over 50 years. <laughs> Good. Didn't age well. <laughs> you want to hear it again? Well, you were playing it, and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Here we go. Because I, I can't see the video. Yeah, not pay attention to the guy. It's, it's, okay. a, guy, it's a guy and a girl in a boat. On a, ki- they're on a boat. But the boat's parked, and they're kissing. So oh. it's, it's not even in the water. Well, it's, well, it's on a trailer. Stupid. Yeah, I know. Should have been in the water. Saturday nights, distant lights. You, your girl, and your Johnson. <laughs> you and your Johnson. A way of life for over 50 years. Do you think that was intentional? I don't know. I mean, the company's called Johnson. I don't know, but they, I, I think they, you know, probably somebody said like you and your Johnson. Well, why can't you like go on it on Saturday night? I don't even think it's a good boat ad. <laughs> like that's not even good. Oh, there you go. Three one two five nine one eighty three hundred. Call now to compete against Kenzie and trivia for Dane Cook tickets. So call now. He's playing uh, the Chicago Theater a week from Friday. No, two weeks from Friday, September twenty seventh. From our great friends at Live Nation, Dane Cook. Beat Kenzie and Trivia. You got the tickets from Brian and Kenzie on Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. You can't defeat her. She's too powerful. Clash with Kenzie. <laughs> Let the battle begin. Q. Well, every day this week at this time, 720, we're giving out tickets to go see Dane Cook at the Chicago Theater. Awesome show. So tomorrow as well as Friday, but today it will be Elizabeth from Lake Zurich competing against Kenzie for the tickets in Clash with Kenzie, which is sponsored by the Schaumburg Boomers. Feel the boom. Uh, For tickets, visit boomersbaseball.com. Elizabeth, ahoy, tell us something really quick about yourself. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, hello. Hello. Sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you guys. Oh, are you? Why can is you that? hear me now? <laughs> I can. Uh-huh. Okay. Good. So tell, us about- <laughs> <laughs> tell us something about yourself, Elizabeth. Um, I am a high school Spanish teacher. Oh, fun. Two days in a row with teachers. I know. We're just getting flooded with these people. How about it? Well, they're, they're smart. Hell yeah. yeah. They're heroes. We have to honor them in Clash with Kenzie. Oh. <laughs> Wait, you get smart people. I mean, it's so hard for me. Uh, do you want to give a shout out to your high school? Um, yeah, Lakes Community High School up up in Lake Villa. <laughs> gang, gang. Yep, yep. Woo-hoo. Yay! Um, how how are the kids today doing with the English? Spanish. Spanish. Oh, Spanish. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. Their, their English is their English is fine. Their yeah. Spanish is questionable, but we're working. I'm happy they can at least ask you in English. That's good. That's a, si- a sturdy sign. <laughs> Yo soy Brian. All right, here we go. First oh, one. fantastico. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, that was kind of fun, right? Ooh. I want to go, I wanna go f- take a Spanish class. Yeah. <laughs> and that's enough, Freddie. Yeah, that's all I'm doing. <laughs> all right, here we go. First one to five wins doesn't care if Kenzie gets one wrong. You can steal a point. She can do the same to you. Call heads or tails. Heads. Ah, it's tails. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right, here we go. Uh, Kenzie, question number one. What Shakespeare play begins with a meeting of the weird sisters? Um, Macbeth. Oh, wow. Because little... it's a prophecy that he's going to become the king. That's why he murders everybody. Does he kill his sisters, the weird ones? No, no spoilers. I haven't seen it. No, I'm not doing this video. It Is was, that... I think it was first performed in like 1606. I don't it's insane. Spoilers. I'm not doing this. Is there a movie, Macbeth? Yes. Who, who's in that? I don't. I'm. I don't know. Older people. It wasn't yeah. like. Brian, it wasn't you don't have new. to look that up. We're in the middle of a segment, Brian. You don't have to look that up. Oh, there was a 2015 movie of was Macbeth. Was there a 2015? Yeah. Okay. You love Shakespeare, right, Kenzie? I do love yeah, Shakespeare. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. I, right. not, I graduated in 2013, though, so the Macbeth I saw was much older. <laughs> you know who was in it was uh, Michael Fassbender, who was in the X-Men movies, who's an incredible actor. Oh. I, he didn't have claws in this one. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have claws in that one either, oh, X-Men. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Kenzie's got one. And it's back to Elizabeth. Elizabeth, what is Napa Valley best known for? Wine. Wine. Yeah, there you go. Ooh, looking for vineyards. Sorry. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, boom. God, Kenzie. <laughs> <laughs> Little Boone's Farm never hurt anybody. Amen, brother. Uh-huh. <laughs> one to one back to Kenzie. Kenzie, which of America's big four sports leagues is the oldest? So we'll say 
football, basketball, baseball, hockey. Oh, what's the oldest? What's the oldest one? And my choices are football, basketball, baseball, and hockey? Yes, the big four. I'm going to say basketball. Basketball. It's no? not right. Elizabeth. I'm going to go with baseball. Baseball is right. Oh, You've heard us quote some White Sox stats, how like the 1899 Louisville Colonels yeah. have the real record that doesn't count because they didn't play 162 games. The I White feel like Sox usually chasing it. like the easiest sports are the ones that not easy to play, like easiest to easiest to make happen. It's like soccer is the most popular in the world because no matter what, like you could even like kick a can and play, if that makes sense. Like mm. I feel like you could throw anything in a circle. It's so hard to put together. We have to find a diamond. You need nine like, guys. We need like 30 people. Can you imagine? I feel these spread. Hey, it's a lot of work. Can you imagine the guy that invented baseball like coming up with it and everybody's going like, you're crazy. What, what are you lot, talking about? A lot of moving parts here. Yeah. <laughs> no one's like, you can play one-on-one in so many. Not in baseball. No. Need every kid in the block. Yep. That's a really good point, Kenzie. Thank you. Yeah. Two to one. Back to Elizabeth. Uh, let's see. Elizabeth, staying in sports. What type of golf club would you use when you are on the green? Oh, dear God. <laughs> on the green. Uh, oh, a putter? Putter's right. Good job. Dude, nice. Putter, putter. Uh, so back to uh, <laughs> yeah, Kenzie. Ken- Three to one back to Kenzie. Kenzie, Meredith Grey is the main character of what long-running drama on ABC? I'm going to guess Grey's Anatomy. Ah, uh, that's right. Lit. <laughs> <laughs> now you might remember if you're like me and didn't watch Grey's Anatomy, she is uh, Ellen Pompeo. Ellen Pompeo, who's Nicole in Old School. Yes, she's awesome in Old School. Oh. Don't like Grey's Anatomy. Which one Love is she in Old school. school? She's the woman that Luke Wilson is wants to date. Wants to date. Got it. And Got she's off. dating Craig Kilborn, who's <laughs> yeah. a total a hole in the movie. Love it. <laughs> Old reference there with Craig Kilborn. Shout but... out Craig Kilborn. I love that guy. Oh, so good. All right. Three... Da- uh, original Daily Show host. If you go back that far before John Stewart. And he also did a late night TV too. Replaced Tom Snyder. That's right. Okay, saying too many names. Can't you want to know more about it? <laughs> no. Okay. I'm lost. <laughs> Going too far. Okay. It is three to two, and it's back to Elizabeth. Elizabeth, what is the square root of 25? Five. Five is right. She's got four. <laughs> uh, Kenzie, what is the technical term for a lie detector? A polygraph test. A polygraph test. You ever taken one? No. Oh. I would love to have one. I'd love to have one accessible. I know some people I would like to take one. <laughs> you know, we keep working on AI and crap like that. If there could be some kind of lie detector through, like, glasses you wear. Like where an you're... app? If you hold your app up and yes. you're like, that sounds like a lie. Yeah. That's, is there one? Is there an app like that maybe we don't know about? I would love that app. I I'd will pay, download it. I will pay for a subscription, which I'm not usually willing to do. Or me, me too. I'd pay a hundred bucks. I'd be a, I wouldn't pay a thousand. I'd pay a hundred bucks right now for that. Yeah, me too. hundred bucks. All right, there you go. Well, it's four to two. It's back to Elizabeth. She can win tickets with a correct answer to this question. I think everybody's well, lying. I have, it's three. I have three. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, it's four to three. Yeah, you have mean, three. Two. <laughs> Sorry, it was one off. I didn't know how to answer the questions and count. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. You have three. Break, and yeah. Elizabeth has four. It's back to Elizabeth. All right, go to Elizabeth. Elizabeth taking Kenzie's side on that one. Yeah. On that fight between <laughs> Chase and Kenzie. <laughs> All right, so this is to Elizabeth. <laughs> yes. For the win, you would find the Mariana Trench in which ocean? Oh, crap. <laughs> Guess an ocean. Three. Um, two. Uh, Pacific. Pacific's right. Good job. <laughs> yes. Pacific Ocean doing something, huh? <laughs> it's always the Atlantic. Kenzie has been slandering the Pacific Ocean all week. Well, it's not pulling its weight. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, it's, it's, rough. it's in today. Elizabeth, the Spanish teacher from Lake Zurich, you are going to see Dane Cook. Estoy tan emocionada. Thank you. Yeah. Dang, I like that. Uh, I don't know what else to say after that except for Yo Soy Brian. No, stop. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> all right, congratulations. We'll do it again tomorrow at this time. Make sure to get on the phones at 710. That's when we get you ready for a clash with Kenzie. Brian and Kenzie. On Q101.